What's up, superheroes? Thank you so much for joining me at episode 8 of the Hustle Door Show. So tell me one thing. Have you ever wanted something really, really bad? You couldn't get it out of your mind and then suddenly it just happened? What you might have experienced was the law of attraction. And the good news is there are ways how to make good things happen to you more often. And we chat about exactly that with the law of attraction coach, Tracy Goody. And we will talk about different techniques of visualization, how to bring more positivity and happiness in your life. And like I said, how to make more good things happen to you and what I like to call it, how to dream professionally. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you do, please subscribe because every Thursday there's a new episode coming out where I chat with amazing people on body and mind growth. But for now, let's jump straight into the episode eight with the Tracy Goody. Hi, Tracy, and welcome to the Hustle Dua Show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. My pleasure. Um, let's start with the kind of becoming a usual question in this podcast, which is yep. what's your biggest superpower? My biggest superpower is uh, healing solutions, I believe. So what I mean by that, so that's kind of like, that's a loaded question for me because I totally believe in superpowers myself as well. Um, and it's something that I want my children to know as well, that they have these superpowers. So it's kind of like somebody will come to me um, with pretty well any problem and any problem from uh, physical, emotional, mental, that whole thing is going to start on the energetic level. So my superpower is really in kind of like diving into the roots and saying what's really causing this problem and then helping them to shift it out and self-heal. So yeah, well, that is my biggest superpower. Yeah, that's one of, one of the hell of a superpower, yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Sounds great. Uh, so before we dive into, you know, a little bit deeper in what you do and, and how do you use your superpower, you know, uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself, you know. So basically, who are you and why are you doing what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll give you I'll give you a kind of a short version. Um, my journey to where I'm at right now, like many people, has had a lot of um, plot twists and a lot of kind of changes in direction. Um, but the basics of how everything got started for me in my spiritual journey and my business journey was basically um, kind of boredom. I was a stay-at-home mom of three kids, and I was like, I would like to make some money while I'm home here with my children. I don't really feel like leaving them. And I also really don't feel like just cooking and cleaning all day. So I was like, I need, I need something to feed me. Um, and that kind of propelled me. I had always been in touch with my intuition and kind of pushed it aside for a large number of years, focusing on uh, family stuff and all that. So I kind of started to let that drip back in. Um, so it was a really kind of um, slow, natural process that I would just say, you know, notice something intuitively was calling to me, whether it was a book or um, a, a teacher or something like that. And then I would just go with it. Um, what that ended up spiraling into, and I mean, this, that started almost 10 years ago. Um, so what that spiraled into was first setting up an online business, which was a virtual assistant business, um, which was fabulous. Cause that became successful like immediately. Cause I already kind of, uh, did the law of attraction thing. That was kind of just a natural thing for me. So that became successful instantly, which was great because then it funded my spiritual journey, um, and all my trainings and energy healings and, um, all kinds of things along th those lines so that I could uh, kind of really treat myself to all the things that I was feeling called to do. Um, and so that's really the shortest version of how I got from basically kind of just feeling stuck and feeling like, you know, I wanted something more um, to where I'm at now, which is like, you know, there's, there's still lots of issues for me to work through, but things are like, things are definitely not boring and they're definitely pretty magical. Um, so yeah, so that's the basic version. Mm -hmm. All right. I Sounds interesting. There. So, so, uh, I think a lot of people could, uh, relate to that feeling of, you know, feeling stuck or like, you know, knowing that you yeah. could do more. I think probably Absolutely. every, almost every single person could relate to right. that. So what was yeah. your basically, you know, thought process and also action process once, once you realized, you know, stop it, I'm going to do something about it. So yeah. What? Yeah. How, how yeah. Do you go so, yeah. So my, and again, that's, that's an evolution too. And I, uh, everybody goes through their own evolution. Um, previously before I had kind of really tapped into my intuition, um, and my spirituality, I would just, I would still find the solution to things. So it's kind of like you ask a question, 
um, or you, you tune in to find out what the question actually is first, right? So there's kind of like this overwhelmed feeling of feeling stuck, but you're not even clear on what's wrong. So the first step is like tune into yourself and like ask what is up because your body and your mind are going to answer you. It might take five minutes of staying quiet and not like doing something for a minute, uh, but your body's going to answer you. So actually finding out what is feeling off in your body first um, or in your mind or whatever. And then from there saying, okay, well, what's the solution to this? And like, I mean, it sounds really, really, really simple. Um, and whenever you're working with something, so say for example, I'm going to use an example of um, like something that a lot of people kind of get freaked out about, which is money, right? So say the problem is, you know, I want to create more wealth. I want to be able to, uh, you know, pay my bills and travel and do all these things, right? And, but yet I keep coming up against this brick wall and doing the same thing, right? So you know that the issue that is feeling off is that there's something in you that feels not okay with the amount of money you have. So then it's like diving into that. Um, and mostly whenever you start to really ask that question, you're going to get to a root like, I don't feel worthy. Um, I don't feel deserving. So you're getting down really, really, really to that root. And that's what, that's what I personally do. And that's what I encourage other people to do. And it's not always a super fun process, but you really get down to that root. And then once you start to pick away at that, that's when the solution energy just, it will rush right in. Like there's no stopping it. Once you move your resistance out of the way, which is, um, which is, like I said, it always comes down to a root of self-worth, fear or, um, or deserving that kind of thing. Right. Once you're moving those things out of the way, shifting your mindset on it, shifting your energy on it, then the solution runs in. I totally like kind of rambled and went on a tangent there, but I, I hope that I answered the question a little bit. <laughs> no, no, of course, of course you did. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. how, um, it, it still sounds uh, too, too good to be true or too simple yeah. to be true. Right. So, yeah. um, uh, and you said, you know, it all usually comes down to, you know, your self-worth and stuff like that. Absolutely. Is there any, uh, you know, specific techniques or maybe questions to ask yourself to get the right answer, right? Because it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I think a lot of people could not just sit five minutes and then after five minutes, like, voila, I figure it out. <laughs> Figured it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. There are so many. Okay. So this is, this is the one of the things that I teach too, because I am not like, I mean, people can go to healers, energy healers and, you know, get the stuff worked on, go to therapists mm -hmm. and spend all of their time and money doing that, which great. That's one path, but you can also learn to self heal too. Um, and I find a combination of the two is really, really powerful. So, uh, some self healing tools for getting to the answers. Okay. So what are my favorite ones? So one of my favorite ones is really, really simple. And that's just tuning into the resonance of the earth. So what you're doing is you're kind of, it's, it's kind of like cutting the, um, cutting the chatter of everything that's going on around you. And you're just tuning in on a really, um, soul level to the earth. And to do that, it's really simple. You just have to just have your hand on your heart and you're just breathing in. That's it. You're focusing on your heart. You're breathing in to your heart. And then as you're exhaling, you're releasing anything through the soles of your feet. So you're just kind of like doing this kind of gentle visualization here. And you can't do it wrong. And if you want to repeat the word uh, love, compassion, unity, anything like that, it helps to connect you to. Um, and that sometimes will cut the clutter enough to allow you to be in the right vibration to get those intuitive answers. So sort of a concentration yeah. meditation as well, right? Pretty well. That's it. And it's just and it's not about making it like a big deal or it has to be a big practice. It's mm -hmm. just tuning into the heart and the earth. So that's one method. Another method, if you have a, you know, quite a bit more static and mental clutter going on is EFT tapping. Um, and I'm not sure if you've heard of this before, but I'll kind of like, I'll chat about it a little bit. You haven't? Okay. Nope. So EFT tapping is like amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you're doing with EFT tapping, and I'll show you really quickly here too, but what you're doing with EFT tapping is you are tapping on specific energy centers in your body. So whenever they do acupuncture, uh, you know, like with the needles, uh, you're, you're tapping on those same centers. You don't have to put the, the needles in, but you're just tapping gently on these centers. And that allows you to tap into your subconscious and to release emotional resistance um, and really reprogram your subconscious. So the way that I like to use it whenever somebody is getting an answer 
whenever you want to get an answer, like a solution to something is I'll, I'll just give you like a super quick run through. And it looks really crazy when you first see it. And I know like whenever I did my training and my husband was like, what in the world are you up to woman? Like it was really crazy looking, but, um, but it really, really works. And millions of people worldwide are like, like it's, it's a real thing. Um, so you just basically tap on these different acupuncture points and I'm not going to give a whole lesson right now. Cause I could talk for hours just about this, but you're tapping on these different acupuncture points and you're focusing on the negative because you're allowing that to come up to the surface to come out. So I don't know what to do about this. I'm feeling frustrated on all the emotions. And sometimes this can get super emotional. People can be like crying their eyes out as they're doing this. That's the release. So that's releasing the resistance. And then you're like, hmm, I wonder what it would feel like to have a solution. I wonder what the answer would be. And you're just going through all these tapping points here. And then it, it allows that subconscious to, to shift and for the information that you already know, because you already have that answer within you, to come forward. So I would okay. say those are my two best, uh, two favorite methods, yeah. And is there any um, logical or scientific explanation to why, why this works? <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm sure that there totally is. I don't know it off the top of my head, but what I would recommend, um, if people are interested in that and learning more about it, there's been all kinds of studies and documentaries and everything like that, um, go to the tappingsolution.com. That's a really good uh, resource for learning about tapping, finding a practitioner, um, and, uh, and, and trying it for yourself because it's such an easy tool that you can just start doing it and get results right away. Yeah, it does. And, it, it, and it's totally free. Yeah. Exactly. It did, it did look easy for everybody who's listening to us on audio on, only. Uh, this could be a good chance to tune in on YouTube uh, because uh, and you know, put in this uh, in in this minutes um, and see what Tracy just kind of uh, uh, showed us how how it worked. So actually, it looked pretty easy. Yeah. So I'm gonna. It's so easy. Check yeah. That out. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So. Um, I would love to move on to the topic of law of attraction. And uh, there are a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is that uh, on Monday, uh, so that will be already uh, you know, a few weeks back after I publish this, we will start a 21-day visualization challenge. So uh, we just want to try it basically for 21 days you know, to do positive daily positive visualization you know, of, of uh, uh, what, I, what I already start calling it kind of a professional dreaming uh, yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> exactly. So uh, I heard the law of attraction many, many times. Uh, I haven't um, read anything about it only since, you know, a couple of months back. So I already know kind of the basics. The basics, but for, yeah. Exactly. But for those who don't, you know, I'm pretty sure there's still millions of people who don't. And I'm pretty sure there's yeah. somebody among our listeners also. Could you give us a little bit of, you know, quick basic rundown what is law of attraction? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, the first thing I want to kind of preface this with is that the law of attraction is one of the universal laws, but it's not the only universal law. So a lot of people get a lot of kind of like hype about this, but just know it's, it's not the entire picture. So some people get really frustrated trying to use it, feeling like it's not working, but just know that it's, it's one piece of the puzzle. So basically what the law of attraction states is that like attracts like. So really in its simplest version is whatever you feel about a subject is what you're going to manifest about a subject. So picturing the world as though it's like a mirror almost. So say for example, um, so I'll go back to kind of like my earlier years and one of the ones that I came up against because I like using myself as an example because like, I mean, it's, I know it well. So feeling like, feeling like I was unappreciated, feeling like, oh, my husband doesn't appreciate all the work that I do, you know, I doesn't appreciate the business and stuff like that. And then whenever it comes down to it, what I wanted to attract into my life is more appreciation and more gratitude. And so then the question to ask yourself um, is where am I, where am I not giving that to myself? That's the biggest thing for this energetic shift to really take place, for the law of attraction to really be working for you. And then it's like, you know what? I'm not appreciating myself. I'm not giving myself breaks. So shifting that energy and then treating myself the way I want other people to treat me, that's one way the law of attraction is going to work. So another one, and I, I always like to go to money as an example because so many people relate to it and so many people... Um, it's such an emotional, emotional topic. It's, it's really, really really interesting. So say for example, you wanted to attract money, right? So what you're doing, and I'm going to get, I tend to use my hands a lot here. So That's the people great. that, 
the people that are listening, yeah, try and check it out on YouTube. <laughs> but um, the way that it works is say that money's like right over here, right? And you're right over here. So you send out your desires and say, I want to attract this money. And what's going to happen is the money's going to start trying to come to you. But what's keeping it away is your, your own resistance. So your own subconscious beliefs that it can't be that easy, you don't deserve it, different things that your parents said if you grew up in lack or if you grew up in, you know what I mean? The subconscious is really what is working for your law of attraction. It's not the conscious mind. So this is where people kind of get tripped up. So the subconscious mind is, um, is what you're going to be using to attract. So if you have a lot of beliefs in there that just don't match up with making money easily, it's the money just, it tries, but it just can't get there. And that's your resistance, right? So that's the thing that's really super important to clear with the law of attraction. Um, but so basically, um, different ways to clear the subconscious is really the key here then. So I didn't give like a super deep um, explanation of the law of attraction. Did you want me to go into that a little tiny bit deeper or? Let's go actually. Let's go. Let's yeah, do it. Come on. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, um, okay. So we've talked about money. We've talked about how the resistance is what causes that. What else is really important to understand here? Um, okay. Let's talk about the steps of say you want to manifest something. You want to work with the law of attraction. Step one is to figure out what you want to manifest. So get really, really, really cl crystal clear on uh, what it is you want to bring into your life. And also just as a side note, everybody is always manifesting, always manifesting. Everything in your life has been manifested subconsciously mainly, but it's been manifested. So you're doing conscious manifesting whenever you're working with the law of attraction, you're, you know, you're paying attention. So you figure out what you want and then you want to figure out why you want it. So, okay, this this does go a little bit deeper than the basic law of attraction because this is my own view on it here. Um, then you want to figure out why you want it. So what are the emotions that I want to create with this? So if I want to manifest an extra couple thousand dollars a month, what is that going to make me feel? So then you just tune in, you know, it's going to make me feel secure. It's going to make me feel free or whatever it is that comes up, right? So you really want to get those emotions crystal clear um, because emotions is, uh, is the currency that you're attracting with. Yeah. And, th and that's what you will use in uh, your, your visualizations as well, because that's what makes visualizations um, potent is whenever you put the emotions, you just close your eyes and picture a squirrel every day. Like, I mean, it's not, it's not going to be beneficial if you, I don't know why squirrel came to my mind, but if you close your eyes and you're like really feeling into how much you'd love to see a squirrel today, a squirrel is going to come into your reality. <laughs> so it's, it's really adding the emotions. So what you want, why you want it. And then you want to ask yourself, so this is kind of like the key part here that is part of my teaching too. Do I really feel like I am deserving and worthy of this? Um, and that's the question where it's, it's really a good idea to sit down and journal and take some time and get really, really honest because that is tapping into your subconscious. And that's where you're going to really experience the healing. Um, and, and sometimes you can do healing on yourself just by bringing it to the light and saying, you know what? This is what I believe about myself, but I learned that whenever I was 10 years old and somebody told me I couldn't have a cookie, so I felt like I'm not deserving. And it can be little things like that. It doesn't have to be big trauma that causes these beliefs. Um, so then you have this belief, well, I don't deserve stuff. I don't deserve nice things, things that, that bring me happiness and pleasure. And so just bringing that up to the light to release it is really, really important. So what you want, why you want it, why you think you can't have it to bring up to the light to clear it. And then it's a consistency practice. So then it's, then it, then you're rolling into like mindfulness and paying attention to how you're feeling, um, and making sure that your vibration is matching what it is you want to attract. Got it. Um, yeah, I got, I got a couple of, um, questions here. Yeah. Uh, First is, uh, or, you know, basically your commentary here. Um, I've also, you know, talked to a couple of meditation teachers also on this podcast and um, especially Leah, the, the one I just published. Um, she told something interesting about this where she said, you know, your thoughts have to be aligned with your emotions, right? So this is basically what, what you said as well. And this morning uh, I was journaling, you know, and, uh, and I finally admitted to myself, you know, I have, I, have this, I have this goal, you know, to achieve one specific thing. Um, yeah. But I, I finally today I realized that still my thoughts are not aligned with my emotions. That means I'm still thinking, you know, like consciously I'm like, yeah, I want this, you know, like I imagine this, you know, la la la. Uh, but then subconsciously I'm like, nah, it's not gonna happen. Nah, it's right? too early, or it's like, uh, nah, 
it i need so much luck to for it to happen you know like i'm i'm putting yes. all these blocks and um yeah so how so how how do you do that so is is this is this asking these these questions or is there any other tips you know how to put those thoughts and so emotions in line yeah yeah there's so many things you can do mm -hmm. um yeah absolutely number one is bringing it to light like you said the journaling the bringing it to light um and it's funny i i saw this quote somewhere and it's like if you argue for your limitations you get to keep them so whenever you're like you know what i mean oh well, it's, it's going to be too difficult so whenever you're telling things like that to yourself then sure that'll come true absolutely um because really, um, so shifting your beliefs is what really needs to happen here. And this is what you're talking about, aligning your thoughts to your emotions, right? So that whenever you are thinking about something, so for example, thinking about your goal, you're feeling really good. You're feeling really appreciative. You're feeling really trusting and really secure. Like, I know this is coming to me and I don't necessarily need to know all the hows right now. I just need to be present in the moment and then I know I'm going to get the next steps as I go, right? That's really the energy that you want to bring forth more so than like all of this doubt energy and maybe even frustration and different things like that, right? And even the biggest killer, the biggest, biggest, biggest emotional killer is guilt. So feeling like, why didn't I work on this or why didn't I do that? Guilt is just like a it's just like a whole pot of resistance. So doing anything you can to release your guilt and pay attention when you start to feel that guilt is great to get it away. Okay. So now matching up your, your thoughts and your emotions. Um, like I said previously, the, uh, the EFT emotion code is amazing for that. So you're tapping again on the negative. So you're saying, even though I don't feel like this can come true and you're just pulling that all up to the surface. And as you're doing that, you'll actually feel the emotional, um, resistance to it, just re relaxing out of your body. It's kind of like you put something down that you didn't know you were carrying and then it just feels so much lighter. And then after you're done tapping out, um, the, the resistance, then you want to move over into the positive and say, I'm open to the possibility. So you're being gentle with your subconscious and you're not being like, you have to totally switch your mind on this right away. You're just saying, open to the possibility that maybe this can come into my life, that maybe this can come into my life easily. And you just kind of slowly work your way through it. Um, so that's one way. Um, working with a journal is another way. So like you said, doing that and what, what I would recommend doing and all of the things that I recommend doing have some kind of like energy component to it. So there's like, I work with a lot of shamanic energy, so it, it kind of carries that vibration through it. Um, but basically what you're doing with the journal is writing out the reasons that you are doubting that it's going to happen. You're, you're bringing the negative to life, which is to light, which is the most important part of the clearing is letting the wound come up into the sun in order to be healed, right? Um, so you're journaling that out. And then, so say you have a list of 10 reasons why it's definitely not going to happen. And again, this is just subconscious. So sometimes when people work with the law of attraction, they get right into, I can only think positive, And then that just creates more anxiety for them. So let the negative come to light, but just know that you're, you're just letting it come to light to heal. Then you're switching back over. So you have maybe 10 reasons why you feel like you cannot accomplish it. What, what then you would do is start a new sheet of paper and for every one reason you say that you cannot accomplish, write three reasons why you know that it's going to come true, why, you know, why that's a real truth. And then you want to burn that first piece of paper that has the 10 reasons you can't. And again, that's just another way to release the emotional attachment to it. Could um, you, uh, I, just very quickly, uh, yeah. give, give an example, like, uh, you know, what, yeah. What, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let's say for example, um, Somebody is wanting to, um, somebody is wanting to get a new job, get a promotion, mm -hmm. right? And so they're tuning in and they're, they're being really honest with themselves and they're saying, you know, I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if, uh, they think I'm the best person for the promotion. I'm not sure if I'm appreciated enough. I'm not sure if I have, um, all of the skills. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. So they're getting really clear like that. And then on the other sheet, so for example, where they said, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. They're really tuning into themselves and their sense of personal power. And they're saying, you know what? I 100% can do it. And they're just kind of like, it's, it's about really tuning into your body and saying, yeah, I know these are, this is the false beliefs that are over here, but what is the real truth that's within me? So you can say, you know, I have this accomplishment and I know that I'm going to be able to do it. I have this experience and I know I'm going to be able to do it. So 
you're giving your logical mind this ego side, you're giving it evidence and it really, really enjoys that evidence because then it can be like, hey, you know what? You're right. I'm, I'm okay with releasing this negative belief because I, I like your new one better because it's super logical. So that's how that one tends to work. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, that's, that can't be done enough. I recommend doing that for like every time you set a new goal or something like that, asking why you can't have it. And then saying, no, that's not true. What are the real true beliefs here? Yeah. That's great exercise. Yeah. I think um, I've, I've, I've heard this quote many times. Uh, uh, and I think it's by Henry Ford, you know, where he, he said, uh, whether you think you can or you can't, it's true, basically. Yeah. Right. So, absolutely. so this yeah. is exactly what it is, right? If you think you can, you can. If you think you yeah. can't, you, you won't do it because, uh, I mean, you're yeah. just putting yourself a block right away. I cannot do this. So yeah. how, you know, what, what, are you, what are you expecting to do, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Uh, so also to, uh, let's say, you know, you've done, you done that first step where you ask yourself, uh, you know, you set, you set that uh, vision. Um, you ask yourself a questions, you know, why I cannot do this? And, you know, you answered why I can. So you did that first exercise and now, and now you, you want to move to the pra- basically practicing it every day. Yeah. Uh, what also are some ways, you know, what, what could be, is there, you know, the journaling or, I mean, we have, we have already some information in, and, uh, for those mm-hmm. people who are going to join the, the visualization guide, but I just want to see your, uh, you know, yeah. your experience there. Absolutely. So what I recommend kind of uh, as a daily practice is and um, I like to kind of be super broad with this so you can make it fit for what feels best for you. Right. Um, So you want to have a method of being mindful of paying attention to what you're feeling. Very, very, very important, because whenever you are mindful and aware of what you're feeling, then you have the power to shift it. Right. If you're going around all day, not taking any quiet time at all, not tuning into yourself ignoring and pushing down feelings, it's, you're just going to keep repeating the same cycle, the same pattern. It's, um, nothing can shift if you're not aware to bring it to light. So mindfulness, very important. Um, number two is find a way, like you said, like you're doing with the visualization challenge, find a way to get into the vibration of what you want. Cause that's going to be pulling it to you. So your mindfulness practice brings to light the things that, um, are not beneficial and that are creating resistance so that you can work to release those. And then um, the visualization or getting into um, the vibration of what you want starts attracting that to you. Um, So so you likely have a lot of methods for that already. The one that I really like is, um, and I'm trying to remember the doctor's name who created this. Uh, It's not coming to my mind right now. But basically what you do is whenever you make the sound, "Mm," like if something is delicious, um, whenever you're making that sound, you can start to reprogram your subconscious mind. So what I like to say is if people, you know, are not super into visualizations, because not everybody's really visual, to instead have a page of affirmations that feel really, really good and really get you in tune with what you want to create and say an affirmation and then make the mm sound in your mind or out loud as you're doing it and continue doing the affirmations and mm sound every time, every day and really get into the feeling of what it feels like to have that um, really, really just paint it as clear as you can. Even if you can't see it in your mind, hear it, smell it, taste it, whatever it is you need to do. Um, but th- those are basically the only two steps. Um, no, I, I lie. I lie. There's more steps. Don't lie, um, Tracy. Come on. <laughs> I, I really shouldn't lie. Back to the <laughs> mindfulness one. Another part of the resistance is then asking, what can I do today to move closer to this? So what steps outside of my comfort zone can I do? So you do have to ask yourself that question. It isn't just all about visualizing and drawing it to you. There is a component where you're, you are tuning into the best action steps forward, right? Mm-hmm. So that in its totality with the mindfulness um, the releasing resistance, um, the uh, visualizing and pulling it closer and the following the action steps that you intuitively feel, um, that's the whole picture. <laughs> Got it. And, yeah. uh, time wise, like, what would you recommend? You know, especially that part where, you know, you visualize, you smell, you hear, you're mm, tasting it, you know, even, uh, yep. or like creating the same emotion as, as it would be so delicious, you know, uh, yep. is, is there any, you know, specific time? duration you would recommend? 
I'd go for uh, for for the visualization aspect about seven minutes. I feel like that's a good time frame. Yeah. Um, you don't have to go like you go for twenty minutes and you're going to get results quicker. It's just like anything else. Whatever you put into it, you're going to get back. You don't want to have a take over your life and visualize for two hours a day um, because uh, it's not super fun to do that. <laughs> it kind yeah. of takes you out of the reality, the ground, at the action steps that need to happen because you need the balance. So yeah, I'd say about seven minutes would. We feel good, yeah. Yeah, so so yeah, so roughly you could say between five and ten minutes, something like Absolutely. that, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, great. Uh, and what are the common mistakes people do? And you mentioned like there's a lot of people who, um, you know, maybe tried uh, law of attraction to some sense, you know, and it's ah, it doesn't work, you know, it's all uh, you know BS and stuff. Uh, what are the yeah. common mistakes? Why why people don't get in tune with that? They don't realize their their power and their potential. They don't they don't understand that. They think maybe because they tried something a few times and it didn't work, then then that's it. It won't work for them. Like if you hop on a pair of skis or a snowboard a couple of times and you know you're 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 not quite getting it, it does not mean you won't get it. it just means you need more practice. Maybe a teacher, maybe more information. Um, so I would say, don't, don't try and fit yourself into a box. Say you read a book and you're like, you know, it doesn't really feel like I want to do the things mentioned here, but I feel like I should, I feel like I have to No, avoid that. Go for the things that you can feel it. Like it's the full body. Yes. Your heart is like, yes, this is for me. This is the action step for me. So if you feel that, um, for example, that journaling isn't for you, don't feel like you have to push and push and push that. Maybe visualization and meditation is better for you. Maybe going on walks in nature. Maybe playing the drums is better for you. Like everybody has their own thing. So don't try and force yourself into a little box. That's the biggest thing is pay attention to the things that give you full body. Yes. Follow those. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yep. Um, yep. And I just realized I would love to um, go a little bit also deeper on that on that vision creation part also so mm -hmm. i think also i i just realized that if i would hear this for the first time i would have many questions so uh you know how far how far ahead i should uh, dream you know basically yeah. is there something you know i would love to you know eat that burger next week or <laughs> or or something yeah. you know in five years or ten years or one year what's what's the most kind of common sense here yes so the way that the universal laws work is they don't work on earth time. So I'm starting to sound a little bit out there. I realize that. But they work on kind of this divine timing, right? So that um, kind of pr pretend the universe is like dropping down all the things that you want to you. But it sees the entire picture. It sees the whole movie playing out. And it knows that if you got this thing you were trying to manifest on Thursday, it's not going to be as beneficial to you as if you get it on Saturday because of whatever components that we cannot comprehend. Um, so being kind of open and trusting. So you do want to kind of set a time frame for your manifestations. But if you're trying to manifest something like a new house, yes, larger time frames like a year or something like that. And that just gives the universe, you might get it before, you might get it after. But the, the point of it is in the trusting um, without necessarily knowing exactly when. If you want to manifest a cup of coffee, you probably get it within 24 hours. It's, you know, it's not a big deal because you don't have a lot of resistance. You don't have a lot going on in your mind being like, it's not possible to get a free cup of coffee, right? But whenever you say, I want to get the absolute perfect house, there's going to be a lot of subconscious beliefs in your mind that say that that's not totally possible. So it takes a little while to work down the resistance and let it happen. But yeah, so it totally varies. Big things, give yourself some time, smaller things expect that they're going to happen pretty quickly <laughs> got it got it so basically be open-minded just uh yes. you know it could happen and just 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 don't focus on the you know time pressure because this will create only more pressure right and then yes and then you know more resistance basically right so don't focus on that yeah all right that's that's that yeah. definitely makes sense and also what uh, what is your opinion about the visual cues you know so people change their uh laptop you know uh, screen savers and, and backgrounds they change you know on the mobile phone they put the vision board and stuff like that yeah. what, what, are, what are your thoughts on that perfect amazing do it for your passwords too um, that's a big thing too is I love having my passwords as something that I am working on so as an energy I want to bring into my life so I might be like 
my passwords might be like happiness and flow or whatever, something simple like that. And it helps absolutely stick it up everywhere, all around you. The more reminders you have and the more times throughout the day that you can evoke that emotion of what that manifestation will bring, the, the faster you're going to bring it to you. I that, think that's brilliant. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I love the, I love the passport idea. I think I'll, I'll change yeah. it today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, also, any tips or resources or books, you know, uh, for those who want to go deeper, basically, you know, uh, I hope people will do the, you know, the 21 day challenge. And obviously, 21 days, as we say, it's always just the beginning, you know, the 21 days only meant to make it easier to keep going. So for those Absolutely. who want to go deep, any resources you would recommend? Um, I would say just because I chatted about it a lot on this, visit the tapping solution.com, pick up the book there. The book is also called tapping solution, um, for working through subconscious, because I feel like there's, there's quite a lot of information out there about the law of attraction. Um, and I'm thinking on what would be my favorite book. Um, uh, my favorite book on the law of attraction, man, that is a tricky one. Um, the, what is that book called? I'll see if it'll come to me here in the next few moments. Um, but definitely the tapping solution for clearing out those subconscious beliefs. Number one, the master key system is the, is the book name. Um, the master key system. Yeah. Great. Okay. I'll put it in show notes. Uh, yep. uh the, link, the link to the book. Awesome. Um, and let's quickly change the topic back to you. So, yep. um, for those who don't know, you're also certified law of attraction teacher, right? Yep. And yep. how, for how many years you've been practicing it? Time's a weird thing. Maybe five years in Earth time. Yeah. In five years in Earth time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. And so, um, uh, when did you, you know, before becoming a teacher, basically, when mm -hmm. did you realize as a person that it worked for you? Well, I've been using it my whole life and not mm -hmm. noticing. I'd make collages and dream boards as a teenager and not just do it because I felt good. It felt fun and creative. So it wasn't until like the secret came out that I was like, that's what I do. And I was like, then I kind of put a name to it. So, yeah. So it was what, whatever point in time that was, sometime in the 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, uh, and so what's, what's, next, what's next in your life? So my biggest thing, and um, talking about evolution as everybody has, so my kind of next evolution for this year is really wanting to bring self-healing to a larger audience, really wanting to bring uh, a lot of clarity to these things about how you can release negative emotions, how you can tune into your own powers, to your own intuitions. That is the biggest thing that I'm working on right now. So I have a new membership website. By the time this goes live, that'll, that'll be open as well. So I have a membership website that has all of my teachings, all of my guided meditations, energy healings, um, so that people can work towards that in a super affordable way. And then I also, of course, do like one-to-one -one coaching and things like mm -hmm. that that help people open up in kind of like quicker and more expansive ways. Um, and those are the biggest things that I'm working on right now, really, really, really getting my message across um, that self-healing is for absolutely everybody and co-creation, the life that you want, is for everybody, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful awesome yeah i wish you uh you know i send you lots of positivity wish you Thanks. best of luck what what are the uh the websites I'll, I'll put the urls in the show notes but perfect yeah so happinessalchemy.com is the uh sacred library so that's where it has all my teachings and then tracygoody.com is my main website and that's where you can find out all about me and some other things that i offer as well as my own podcast and blog and all kinds of stuff check it out <laughs> awesome yeah exactly actually uh tracy has her own podcast and i've uh, i've listened to her and you you publish quite frequently right like every two or three days yeah yeah awesome yeah no no i love it it's it's uh it's uh, short and sweet and 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 uh, uh kind of good, provides good value so that's awesome thank you all right thanks tracy uh just before we say goodbye uh, i would love to do a rapid fire round Okay, let's do it. Let's do that. So number one, uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. It, you, are, you are like, no questions about it. Coffee. I have some herbal teas, but man, coffee is my juice. <laughs> yes, yes. Something about it. I love it as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, dogs or cats? Dogs. Why? Because <laughs> I love them and cats are kind of shifty. I don't really trust them as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, yeah. They're, they're keeping the secrets. Yeah. Um, if you could paint anything, what would you paint? Um, I would paint 
if I could paint anything, yeah. like if I could paint like a beautiful image or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you have, you have a white canvas and some paint. I would paint everywhere in my house on one floor of my house would be a forest. Absolutely. <laughs> a forest. Beautiful. A forest. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, a question I borrowed from Tim Ferriss, like uh, some of my guests already busted me. <laughs> uh, a purchase under $100 that changed your life. Books. Every, pretty well every book I've ever bought. So yeah, books. Oh, and what, what, could be books. The, what, what could be the last one or the last one that comes to your mind that really influenced the, you? Well, um, the, well, the very last one I bought, I'm looking at here, is Alchemy of the Nine Dimensions. So I'm just a bit through that one. That is a big, um, you have to really be open to stuff for that one. Um, but that's what I love because it stretches my awareness of what is possible and what is real. So yeah, that was the last one I purchased. Awesome. And yeah. uh, city everybody should visit? City everybody should visit. I am going to take it to, okay, so I have two here, right? I really mm -hmm, have to sure. go for two. Um, Florence, Italy, because it has the most amazing vibration to it um, that I've ever witnessed. And Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, because this is where I'm from here on the east coast of Canada, a little island on the east coast of Canada. And it is, um, it's just really, really kind of like, artistic and beautiful and fun and um everybody's super 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 nice it's potentially the safest place in the world so i recommend it for everybody to come and check it out here it's the calmest place i've ever been to yeah awesome sounds awesome uh, yeah. we'll check it out never been to canada yeah. yet yeah uh, not, great. not this time of year <laughs> no okay <laughs> coming this summer um, awesome, Tracy. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time and for your insights and for a lot of, lot of practical tips. I hope for everybody who've um, come up to Law of Attraction and Visualization for the first time, they kind of got a glimpse and not even a glimpse. They could actually got a lot of practical tips from you. So really big, fat thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you learned something new that you could, you could implement in your life right away. Uh, you can find the show notes of this episode at uh, hustleduo.com forward slash Tracy. You'll find everything she mentioned, to all the resources and everything right there. And of course, don't forget to check out our 21-day body and mind challenges. Uh, we are in the middle of the visualization challenge, I think, by the time you hear this. So you can, but you can start any day, you know, you can start any challenge, anytime. You don't have to do it with us or, you know, finish with us. So just go check it out. We have plenty of challenges for body and mind. So thank you so much for listening again. I really appreciate that. I hope you have a nice day and I'll catch you later, folks.